Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. Lord, may your spirit and power be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome you all in a very special way, brothers and sisters all over the world. May the Lord truly bless you. My name is Kudzaj Gogore, your host, and this is the Herald Report Ministry. And today we are focusing on what is happening in the United States of America, as I mentioned last, last, last night or yesterday, rather. And we're looking at the separation of church and state, which uh, Mike Jones says, says is a misnomer. And uh, this basically is the formation of the image of the beast. So we're looking at image image of the beast formation. This is very interesting, brothers and sisters. I will encourage you to share this message. I will encourage you also to watch it to the end. Now, it is an obvious reality that many people want to see the change of constitution in the United States of America. And also, this is actually very much pronounced within the government of uh, United States of America. Many uh, Americans would think there is a great benefit when the church is directing the government. Uh, you find that, remember, this was a Trump campaign. It was a Trump card. The evangelicals wanted somebody who could listen to them and Trump is prepared to listen to them. And this is exactly what is happening again. We are a very step closer to the full formation of the beast. Now, I want us to examine these uh, uh, three clips today, but let me start with two and then I'll go to the last one towards the end. So the first one it's something which has happened quite a while ago, but I want you to have a look. This was during the Trump uh, campaign. A United States congressperson says she is sick and tired of separation of church and state. Here it is. The reason we had so many overreaching regulations in our nation is because the church complied. Amen. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. That's not in the constitution. It was in a stinking letter and it means nothing like what they say it does. That woman needs to take a history class. Uh, the church is not supposed to direct the government. The founding fathers of this nation had many flaws. One thing they got right was that they were trying to get the hell away from Christians and Christians. Indeed, the lady is full of energy. She's tired the of United this States. separation of church and state. And she has said the point clearly, which is very interesting. Uh, but there's something very interesting, brothers and sisters. What we need to ask ourselves is what will happen when the church is controlling the state? What will happen when the church, when the religious body is directing the civil power? Has this happened before? And what was the result? But however, before we deal with that, let's actually listen to the current speaker, uh, Mr. Johnson, as he also talked about the separation of church and state. This was a question which was asked. Now take a look. Speaker, I just want to ask you a separate question. Uh, you've talked uh, quite openly, publicly about the importance of faith and, and faith in your life. Um, I think it was the first day that uh, you had been uh, sworn in. It appeared uh, that you had, were praying uh, on the floor uh, of Congress with a number of other uh, congressmen. And there is a question about the separation of of church and state. Uh, we often talk on this show about uh, folks, uh, about whether religion should play a role uh, inside a company, whether people should be allowed to, to pray inside a company. There's one thing to, to pray outside and to, and to have your faith, and, and, and there's a great importance in that. But how do you think about that, and how do you think about the public perception of that? Listen, faith, our deep religious heritage and tradition, is a big part of what it means to be an American. When the founders set this system up, they wanted a vibrant expression of faith in the public square because they believed that a general moral consensus and virtue was necessary to maintain this grand experiment in self-governance that we created, a government of, by, and for the people. We don't have a king in charge. We don't have a middleman. So we've got to keep morality amongst us so that we have accountability. And so they, they wanted faith to be a big part of that. The, the separation of church and state is a, is a misnomer. People misunderstand 
understand it. Of course, it comes from a phrase that was in a letter that Jefferson wrote. It's not in the Constitution. And what he was explaining is they did not want the government to encroach upon the church, not that they didn't want principles of faith to have influence on our public life. It was exactly the opposite. Washington said, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. And John Adams came next and he said, our Constitution is made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. They knew that it would be important to maintain our system. And that's why I think we need more of that. Not an establishment of any national religion, but we need everybody's vibrant expression of faith because it's such an important part of who we are as a nation. Speaker. So this is um, what uh, the speaker is saying. Uh, basically saying there is a misnomer. Uh, people don't seem to understand what the founding fathers were saying. And what the speaker is saying is not different from what the lady was saying. Uh, these are all Congress people. They are using the same language. These are all backers of uh, Donald Trump. These are the very people which are actually advocated for Donald Trump. And to them, there is nothing evil if the state will be directed by the church, if the church will have influence in what is happening uh, in the state. So you realize that the speaker is, agreeing, is in agreement with the congresswoman. But however, is it really true that uh, the people who have advocated for church and state do not really op understand the constitution? If there will be that uh, there is now a relationship of working together between the church and the state now or with the two between the religious organization and state which religion is going to influence the state now i want you to, to go let's go back to the uh, words of uh, the speaker it says people misunderstand it he continued of course it comes from a phrase that was a letter that johnson wrote it's not in the constitution and what he was explaining is they did not want the government to encroach upon the church not that they didn't want principles of faith to have influence on our public life it's exactly the opposite now from what he's saying this is not in the constitution but is it really true remember the men as they have said that you know people saw him uh, praying in public and uh, they asked him about the separation of church and state because of his action and not only that because of his words before and the way how he was working lobbying for the church to the government now there are many different faith in America as I've said before so which faith is going to influence the government now will this be accepted by the people of america what does the bible say regarding such practice when the church is influencing the state now brothers and sisters nothing is further from the truth revelation chapter 13 it makes it very clear we have got the first beast which is papacy and then we have got the second beast, which is America. Now, the great controversy says to us, when the leading churches of the United States unite upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce the decrees and to sustain their institution, then Protestant America would have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon descenders will inevitably result. So what Mike Johnson is advocating is that let church have an influence on the government. Now, when the church has influence over the government, it means that they are going to enact laws and these laws may be contrary to what the government wants or may be against the principles of some. Now. 49% of America, that's Protestants. They are only 49%. So if they are, we are going to have the influence of the Protestant churches of America on the government to enact laws, this will be in violation to many other people. But most important and interestingly, it says that they will form an image of the beast. Which beast? The beast that has existed before, which is the Papal Rome. Now, brothers and sisters, the question is, 
is this Iraq now forming or is America now forming an image of the beast? How did the beast behave before? Now let's look at Revelation chapter 13, 11. The Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he spake, uh, he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now the verse is very interesting, and the verse is pecked. The beast is coming out of the land, which is an unpopulated place, which is America. Very correct. The beast has two horns. The beast is both civil and religious, and the beast is like a lamb. Therefore, the beast is is innocent but when she begin to speak she speaks as a dragon now the question is who is the dragon the bible is very clear in the book of revelation chapter 7 chapter 12 that the dragon primarily is the devil he is the dragon he is the deceiver but secondarily the devil is an opportunistic creature which works with an establishment and in the book of revelation chapter 12 the dragon is the beast the dragon is rome the dragon is the papal rome and now you realize that you know this dragon persecuted the saints of the most god the most high God. The objective of the dragon is to destroy the fight between the dragon and, uh, uh, and Michael. It's on the commandments of God. And now those who follow in the teaching of the dragon who fight the commandments of God. Now who is the power behind the secondary dragon? Remember the secondary dragon being Rome or being pagan Rome and Papa Rome. She is following behind the behind the devil now the power behind the dragon or the power behind yes the power behind the secondary dragon is the devil himself so now you find that you know the objective of the devil is to destroy the law of god the object of the devil is to ensure that god cannot be worshipped so now let's balance this very well america will speak as a dragon how does the dragon speak the, how does the nation speak? The nation will speak by her constitution. Now, what did the dragon do, which is so prominent in the Bible? We go to the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. The Bible says, he shall think to change the times of law, times and law. He will persecute the sense of the most high. He will wear out the sin. In other words, he will persecute the most the sins of the most high. He will intend to change the times. He will intend to change the laws of the most high. So now when America will speak as a dragon, this is exactly what she will do, what is written in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. What will she be doing? She will speak blasphemy. She will change the law. She will persecute the sins of the Most High. She will wear out those. She will destroy without mercy. Why? She will now be speaking as the dragon. So she will just follow in the steps of the dragon. What the Papa Rome did is the same thing which America would did to persecute the sins. Now look at uh, verse ch chapter 12, verse 13. Chapter 13, verse 12 of America. It says, and he exercise all the power of the first beast before him. What did the first beast do? The first beast wore, wore out the sins. The first beast destroyed the sins. The first beast changed the laws of the most high God. The, the first beast did quite a lot to ensure that the God of heaven may not be worshipped. Now he would cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast who de whose deadly wound was healed. You know, there is something very interesting about the second beast. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 13 or the book of Daniel chapter 7, all the beasts that were coming on the scene, we will conquer the beast that was on scene and the next beast will rise. But as for America, as she step on the scene, her job is to revive the old beast. Her job is to strengthen the old beast. Her job is to ensure that all the power, the homage will be given to the first beast. Now, how is she going to do it? Verse 18, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven. <coughs> 
on the earth on, in the sight of many and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast say unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which he had the wound by a sword and did live when was the wound inflicted in 1798 by general Bathia, the general of napoleon now america then will say my job is now to revive this beast she had not finished what she intend to do now verse 15 the bible says and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads so there is a lot of work which the secondary beast or which america would do she will work very hard to propel the beast. She will work very hard to propel the dragon. She will work very hard to ensure that the constitution of the dragon has been enacted. She to ensure that the whole world wanders after the first beast. Therefore, America will be an instrument in the hand of the first beast to ensure that what the first beast intends can actually take place. Now, listen to this paper. This, uh, this is uh, what we are dealing with here. It says, while it is technically true that the words separation of church and state are not written in the constitution, many legal scholars have said that the phrase is a reference to the establishment clause in the first amendment. Oh yes, this is an establishment in the first amendment. Now the question is, does Mike Johnson know about this amendment. Now let's actually look at the words of Mike Johnson once again because he seemed to disagree with this amendment. He says, Johnson suggests Tuesday that the nation's founders believed religion and morality are central to the government. Is it really true? I think that's actually not true because when the founders of America moved from Europe to America. They were running from the tyrannical of the papacy. They were running from a system where the state and religion was working together. So Mike Johnson is getting this very wrong. He is actually acting. This is actually not what this was intended. He says, they knew that it would be important to maintain our system, he said, and that why I think we need more of that. Now the question is, what system was that? For they were running away from the system that were joining the truth together. Not an establishment of any national religion but we need everybody's vibrant expression of faith because it's such an important part of what we are as a nation that's a lie <laughs> that's a lie but now brothers and sisters let me actually allow the Americans to speak now follow this let's go ahead and go to the Constitution Congress shall what make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. In an 1801 letter to the Danbury Baptist Association of Connecticut, President Jefferson Thomason wrote, and I quote, believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people, which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment. Let's go ahead and go to the comment. It is an obvious reality, brothers and sisters, that there is a war of separation between religion, religious power, and civil power. This was done to prevent the horrors of darkness, of the uh, dark ages. The church should never have influence over the state. And this is what the First Amendment say again. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And the declaration says, we hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they, in, and they were endowed by their creator with certain unil Analia Nebo writes that among these are life, 
liberty and pursuit of happiness. For that reason, brothers and sisters, nobody should exert anything on anyone pertaining worship. You are free to worship what you want. You are free to live the way you want to live. This is exactly what America is all about. But however, it's very plain and clear that those in charge now, the Congress woman, the congressman, the speaker of the house, they want to change this all together. Their belief is you got it wrong. But however, my trusted source is the Bible and the great controversy. Let's go to the great controversy. Page 442, paragraph 2, it says, such action will be directly contrary to the principles of this government, referring to the government of America, to the genius of its free institutions, to the direct and solemn avowals of the Declaration of Independence and to the Constitution, the founders of the nation wisely sought to guard against employment of secular power on the part of the church with its inevitable result in tolerance and persecution. So what exactly will happen? The land of the free, she will reject her constitution. The land of the free, she will go back to the beast. The land of the free, she will be influenced by the dragon once more and she will do all the biddings of the dragon. We are told that the constitution provides the Congress, uh, the constitution provides that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, and that no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States, only in flagrant violation of these safeguards. To the nation's liberty can any religious observance be forced by civil authority but the inconsistence of such action but the inconsistence of such action is no greater than in re, than is represented in the symbol it is the beast with the lamb like horns in profession pure gentle and harmless but when she speaks she speaks is a dragon so in other words uh, america will change and the change is happening so fast and we can see the formation of the beast today we are waiting for those evangelical churches to go and push the congress and they will change the law we are waiting for those evangelical churches to do the biddings of the first beast of Revelation chapter 13. We are waiting for those evangelical churches because we are told primarily that this will be pushed by the evangelical churches or the leading churches of America, that the constitution of America may change and they will speak like the mother which is the papacy. Now we're told that when our nation in its legislative, legislative councils shall enact laws to bind the conscience of men in regard to their religious privileges, enforcing Sunday observance and bringing oppressive power to bear against those who keep the seventh-day Sabbath, the law of God will to all intents and purposes be made void in our land and national apostasy will be followed by the national ruin. This is exactly what will happen, national apostasy will be followed by national ruin. But it's important to realize that who will be the champions to lead in this national apostasy? The founding fathers were champion to lead in the free world where they said everyone is at liberty to do what they want, to worship what they want, but their children are now advocating for, for the coming, for the influence of the church to the state and remember the bible is very clear that in revelation chapter 16 the bible says verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet and these three unclean spirits they've got one in the same agenda they go to the kings of the earth and to the whole world they gather everyone to the battle of the great day of almighty in other words they are going to work tirelessly they are going to work together to ensure that there is a bond of unity as we learned yesterday there is a union there is a togetherness and this togetherness is all about fighting the commandments of god now look there is a dragon which is primarily the devil or the papacy 
and there is a beast which is actually uh, the papacy. In fact, the dragon is the devil himself. The beast is the papacy, and there is a false prophet, which th false prophet, which is apostate Protestantism or America. And now, inspiration say the Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism they will reach over the abyss to class hands with Rome, roman power and under the influence of the threefold union this country will follow in the steps of rome in trembling on the rights of conscience so now the papacy which is the dragon secondarily the dragon she will work with the beast the beast in fact, let me start again. The papacy will work with America, which is apostate Protestantism. The job of the apostate Protestantism is to bring everyone to the beast, which is the papacy. And the papacy is being directed by the dragon, which is the, which is the devil, devil himself. So the devil is working together with the papacy and is working together with the apostate protestantism to bring everyone to fight against god now how will the constitution of america change the constitution will change in that the apostate protestantism is taking notes from the beast the beast is being directed by the dragon and very soon the whole world will wander after the beast and they will worship the dragon and they will worship the beast who and they will say who is like unto the beast because the beast they have been given power by the dragon but the real fight is between is between michael which is jesus christ and the devil and the fight is on the commandments of God. Now we are told that Protestants have tempered and patronized popery. They have made compromises and concessions, which puppies themselves are surprised to see and fail to understand. Men are closing their eyes and the re to the real character of Romanism and the dangers to be apprehended from her supremacy. The people, the people need to be aroused to resist the advances of this most dangerous foe to civil and religious power. Brothers and sisters, we need to resist. We are called to be protestant. We will protest until we go to the grave. We will protest until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should never accept the Roman hierarchy. We should never accept uh, the papacy uh, demands. We should never accept that the church should direct the state. When that is happening, brothers and sisters, it's a dangerous thing. Therefore, to those in America, this is how their nation was found. It was a Protestant country and it will remain a Protestant country until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though some will compromise, but the children of God will remain Protestant. We are told that a time is coming when the law of God is in a special sense to be made void in the land of the United States of America. The rulers of the nation will, by legislative enactment, enforce the Sunday law, and thus God's people will be brought into great peril. But now, why would they enforce the National Sunday law? It is simply because they will make an image of the beast. And what they are doing is they are making an image as it was in the first beast. The laws of the first beast will be enacted. So when they are advocating that let there be an influence of religion to the civil power, they are actually saying let's actually make an image of the Roman hierarchy as it was before. Let's make it again today. That will be beneficial to the people of America. But now the question is, what should we do in anticipation to this? Brothers and sisters, the Bible says the sons of Issachar knew the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. And Jesus warned the, the readers in Matthew chapter 24, 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Brothers and sisters, it's time to leave Jerusalem and go to the mountains. It's time to leave big cities. 
it's time to ensure that we set ourselves in places where we will not find it very hard when these laws have been changed. As we covered yesterday, brothers and sisters, the world will be a digital concentration camp by the year 2030. Many of the privileges that we have today, we are going to lose them. And if we don't prepare for these challenges to come, brothers and sisters, it will be very hard and difficult. This is a time to prepare because a crisis is brewing and no pain can actually describe this crisis that is coming but we know that it will be a very serious crisis because the reality is that the world is now hell-bent the world is now rebelling the world is changing completely we are going back to the horrors of the dark ages and we are told that as America the land of re religious liberty shall unite with the purpose in enforcing the conscience, enforcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the full Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. That's testimony, volume speak, six page eighteen. I always say, brothers and sisters, if Jesus Christ will come in our generation, it is us that is going to go through all this pain. For that reason, we are called to prepare. And the day of preparation is today. The time of preparation is now. We are told that the substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exhortation by merely human authority on Sunday in the place of Bible Sabbath is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. That's testimony of volume 7 page 141 so this is the ultimate thing which the devil is working hard to achieve to ensure that the law of god will be set aside to ensure that the human laws will be exalted to ensure that rebellion will take a set center stage and when that happens, it's not going to happen only in america it will be cascaded all over you know brothers and sisters let me tell you something what is happening in kenya what is happening in Europe, what is happening in Nigeria is very important. But the eyes of those who read are on America. When America moves, when America makes a change, then we know that it will cause a ripple effect all over the world. What then should I do? Brothers and sisters, the verse says, Blessed is he that readeth. That's Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. There is a great attack on the spiritual prophecy, brothers and sisters. And this great attack has affected many of us but the reality is that blessed is he who readeth not only that when i have read i understand i act upon that which i have read then i am blessed i will be shielded from the challenges that are coming or even though we will go through the challenges but we will not be have anything to worry because we would have prepared enough how do you prepare enough victory over sin, positioning yourself where God says we should be. Brothers and sisters, this is a call to preparation as we see the changes which are taking place in the United States of America. God has given us wisdom. God has given us inspiration. God has given us his words so that we may know what we ought to do as the children of God living in these last days. I definitely believe by God's grace, and this is my prayer that my belief could be true, that let Jesus come in this generation. But however, if he delays, still we are to obey the word of God. If he comes and we are prepared, then blessed are we. And remember, the, the promise is very clear. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Brothers and sisters, time is at hand, and this is a time for the return of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. For the time is at hand. Give us grace and wisdom to prepare so that when you shall come, you find us ready to meet you. Pour your spirit upon us. Strengthen us in the decisions that we have made. And give us wisdom to continue to make wise decisions, to come to you, 
Bless us, we plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the Lord continue to bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition. Let's continue to share the message. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not so. Don't forget to share the link. Until then, continue to be strong in the Lord. Amen. <music>